Hello, I'm Sharon Young and welcome to my Living With Flourish video blog. The title of today's video blog is Mind Your Language. Have you ever noticed how your language starts to create your reality? Maybe you've been making an excuse for not doing something. Oh, I'm really sorry, I've been so busy. And all of a sudden you notice that you get even busier. Or maybe you're thinking about a, a difficult conversation you've got to have with a colleague. And you're saying, oh, it's an absolute nightmare. And guess what? Suddenly it does seem to turn into that. And that conversation just goes from worse to worse. That's exactly what I mean about your language creating your reality. An example for me personally, quite, quite recently, was I was appearing in, in a show. It was a musical theatre show and it involved lots of singing and dancing. And we had about 16 numbers that were choreographed for the chorus. And to be honest, again, creating my reality here, I realised this, um, choreography and dancing isn't the thing I find easiest. And I realise exactly as I'm saying that what I'm doing. But there was one particular song. It was called Sit Down, You're Rocking the Boat. And I just couldn't get the hang of this song. I missed the rehearsal when we initially did the choreography. And even though I was watching the videos over and over again, I just wasn't getting it. And then I realised what I'd been doing was saying to myself, oh, that song, it's just my nemesis. I'm never going to get it. And you know what? It was my nemesis. Because I don't think I ever got that entirely right apart from the final show, when I think I was just too exhausted to be worrying about it. Um, and so I literally had created my own reality. And it's something we do a lot. And so at this point, I'd like to uh, give you a special treat and to introduce my fellow flourisher and my Living With Flourish coach, Chaz Chatterton. Hi folks. Chaz has been helping me through the Living With Flourish process, so he's been coaching me as I've been looking to work through things. And I wanted him to come along today because I know this is a topic that's really close to his heart. Um, so Chaz, perhaps you could, you could tell our audience a little bit about why you think language is so important in creating your reality. Well, if you think about the language that you use, if you say to somebody, oh, I can't do something, I'm just so busy, they're going to think exactly that. If your body language is such that it looks like you're tired, you haven't got any energy, people will think that and they will uh, amend their responses to you based on that. So you create your own reality, whether it's by the words that you speak or by the way that you carry yourself and your body. So if you don't carry or pro uh, project a particularly positive outlook, then people are going to see that of you. So it is very, very quick and very easy to actually figure out that, ooh, my language isn't good and I need to change it and that can have a really positive impact. Mm. If you'd like to hear more of this, and this is I'm talking to you guys here, uh, I'm running a, a session at the World of Learning uh, at the NEC in Birmingham on the 19th and 20th of October, specifically round language. Now this is a huge claim for just a small presentation, but if you take some of the actions that I'm talking about in it, it will change your life for the better. I will guarantee it. The thing is, that's a really simple thing for me to say. It's not an easy thing for you to do. So, big claim, easy done. And I think we're, we're going to talk a little more about the language now, aren't we, Jack? Absolutely. And, and um, I thought it might be useful for you to sort of to demonstrate the power of doing this for me. Some of the things that Chas is going to be talking about um, at, at the World of Learning um, is part of the process that we've been going through over the last couple of months. So, we're just going to replay some of the conversations we've had during our coaching conversations about the language that I use and particularly the language I use around time as we know from the last video blog that's a big issue. So when me. we first started talking we went through your flourish flower mm -hmm. and you scored yourself on all of the aspects of, of the flourish model and as we were talking about each of them time was obviously the big issue. Yeah. You were too busy, you didn't have time, you just had too much going on, you didn't have the energy. And once I pointed that out, you started to figure out yourself what was going on. So what did you start thinking yourself in terms of how can I fix this? So, well, the first thing was, was actually starting to become more aware. And it's really weird when you start looking for something, how you start seeing it. It's like if you've decided I'm suddenly I'm going to buy um, a, a, a Vauxhall Astro, for example, as my next car, you suddenly start seeing them everywhere. And, and that was exactly what happened. Once we, it, it was drawn to my attention, I noticed the amount of times that I said something like that throughout my working day. 
just talking to colleagues saying, oh yeah, I'll get round to that, but I've been really busy. Or sending an, an email to someone saying, oh, it's been flat out here. We've been so hectic. And I realised how that had seeped into not only my life, but actually the entire office. Um, our customer support executive, Lucy, um, she said to us, look, when I joined you three and a half years ago, you said that we'd get round to it when we had that quiet period. And when is that quiet period going to be? <laughs> so not only was I creating my own reality, I was actually creating the reality for, for, for my own company. So, so the first thing was very much being aware of what was the things that I was saying. The second thing was to say, well, what did I want to have instead? And I think what I was saying was that I had a very full life. It was very, there was very hectic, lots of stuff going in it, no space for other things to go into my life. And as we were doing the coaching overall, I realised that what I really wanted was a fulfilling life. And so I started to think about how could I change the language that I'd been using to fit more with where I wanted to be rather than where I had been and where I was creating for myself. And so I started using language like I've actually been having you know, a, a really energising and active day. I've got lots of great things going on. So still lots of stuff, but it's good things. It's a positive thing as opposed to, oh my God, I've got so much stuff going on. And I, I know for myself that what really helps me is getting help from other people. Um, when I first did personal development uh, 25 or 30 years ago, um, we had the idea of a learning contract which we shared with people. So one thing I've, I decided to do was to share with the team that this was something I was working on and created my own equivalent of a swear box. So every time they heard me or saw me writing um, any words that were around this, I'm so busy, there's so much going on, they had to point out to me and I would put some money in the swear box and that would go towards our Christmas drinks. And um, how much have you got in that swear box at the moment, Sharon? A big fat zero, actually. Um, so, uh, so yeah, it's been amazing. Just, just paying attention to it has really made a difference to the language that, that, that I'm using. Uh, another alternative that I, I used to use, haven't done it this time, um, but for me it was around when I criticised myself, I had an elastic band. So every time I said one of those words I didn't want to, I just pinged myself. Bit of an aversion therapy thing, but it's that, that same kind of idea. Whatever it takes for you to remind you, oh, no, 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 I shouldn't be saying that. I want to be saying something different. I want to be saying something that's going to contribute to the life that I do want to have rather than the stuff that I don't want to have. So is it fair to say that what you've changed so far has had a bit of an impact on, on life? Absolutely. I mean, I've still got a long way to go. There's, there's lots of things around this, but I think the big thing is I just feel a lot calmer. Um, and uh, it's you know it's not about being quiet and boring. It's actually I feel more more in control. So I've still got lots of stuff in my life. And to be honest, that's great because I get very bored very easily with not having things to do. Um, but it's all stuff that I feel in control of. I feel that I'm able to do it. I don't feel that it's controlling me. And I think that's a, a really important shift for me. I've created a reality where I've got lots of great things that I can and am managing. Um, and that's a, a really, really, really big difference for me. Um, so, uh, so, so, yeah, so thanks to Chaz for pointing it out and, uh, and sort of for the techniques. But I'd like you guys to think about for yourself then, what words are you using? And what is that doing to your own reality? What reality are you creating for yourself? If you find that you've got situations that keep coming up that you don't want to have, just listen to your self-talk or the talk that you give to other people as well. Are you using positive or negative language? Are you creating a positive or negative future for yourself? As I said, if you want to know a little bit more about this, then come along and see the wonderful Chaz in action um, in the session at the Experiential Learning Zone that we run at the World of Learning on um, the 19th and 20th of October. We'll put some details about that um, on the website. Um, but uh, for now, I think uh, thank you very much to Chaz for coming along and uh, interacting with us today. And um, I look forward to the next session with you. But until then, keep flourishing. Thank you. See ya.